The Last of Us Part 2 is arguably one of the most controversial games of all time. So the fact that there are people out there that do like The Last of Us Part 2, for some reason that just pisses some people off. Because there are people out there that have different opinions or views on The Last of Us Part 2 from those who hate this game. Now, before anyone actually comes into this video disliking this video just because they disagree with the idea that there are people out there that do like The Last of Us Part 2, remember that just like there are people out there that hate the living shit out of this game, there are also people out there that love this game as well, and that their opinion should be respected just like yourself. At the end of the day, what I'm trying to say is, no matter if you like The Last of Us Part 2 or you hate this game, your opinion should be respected and is valid at the end of the day. So let's not take it way too seriously if somebody just has a different opinion from you. So what I'm going to do in this video is basically talk about a few reasons why The Last of Us Part 2 is loved by so many gamers that have played this game. Because honestly, I haven't seen a lot of YouTubers out there even touch this subject apart from Deacon and probably Tajay. Because let's face it, the popular thing is to actually shit on this game. Also, remember that I made a video a few weeks ago talking about why The Last of Us Part 2 is hated. So basically, this video is the sequel to that video. And if you haven't watched it, I really encourage you to watch that video first and then come back and watch this one. You'll find that video on the link that's going to be on top of this video or in the link in the description down below. My intention here at the end of the day is just to give perspectives on both sides so that possibly one day this disgusting war between those who hate and love this game can one day end because I'm just truly disgusted about what people are saying to each other and I just want at the end of the day for people to understand each other. But knowing how the internet is, there's always assholes out there that just don't care about you and just want to see the world burn and love this chaotic mess. But no matter if people want to keep spreading toxicity in this gaming community, I'll keep on respectfully sharing my thoughts and views on these subjects as respectful as possible and hope to find people out there like yourselves that also likes content like this in which we can peacefully create a conversation between the two sides. If you like content like this, consider subscribing to my channel and like this video which are the best ways in supporting this channel and this video. It's free anyways to subscribe and to like this video, and I will greatly appreciate it. So now guys, sit back, relax, put some headphones on, and let's talk about why The Last of Us Part 2 is loved by many gamers, myself included. The Last of Us Part 2 is loved by millions of gamers worldwide because basically it is the direct sequel of The Last of Us. The anticipation for this game was truly as big as the Cyberpunk 2077 hype and it all started when this game was announced back in 2016. And ever since then, this game has basically been one of the most talked about games for years. And when this game arrived in June 19th, 2020, even after all the hate this game received from very influential content creators and people on social media because of the leaks of how Joel died, there were many people who voiced their love for this game as well, as much as those people that hated The Last of Us Part 2. But of course, social media works only to move traffic, and when there is a lot of drama and hate, usually that wins more than what is positive, and basically that gets the most attention. So of course it seemed like nobody actually liked this game, but actually the narrative of nobody liking this game couldn't be further from the truth. And I guess what proves that is, for example, when we see the amount of people that actually voted for The Last of Us Part 2 to win Game of the Year. And yeah, even though Ghost of Tsushima won Player's Choice Award, the only game that truly competed with Ghost of Tsushima on votes was The Last of Us Part 2. Also, just to give another example from many others, it was also announced that 2.5 million verified PlayStation players voted for The Last of Us Part 2 to win Game of the Year for the PlayStation Platinum Awards, which shows again that not everything you hear or see on social media is always factually true. Okay, so I have a question for you guys. Why did many people vote for The Last of Us Part 2 as their game of the year if this game is too controversial and hated by a good chunk of people? Well, because I believe those people that actually played The Last of Us Part 2 and liked The Last of Us Part 2, I believe they understood that the message of this game wasn't just revenge is bad, 
don't do it. Which is a narrative that a lot of people were making up that this is just what the game is all about. They instead connected with a story that showed you the true repercussions and consequences of actions taken in the first The Last of Us. In such a way that truly makes you experience an emotional roller coaster like you've never experienced before in any other story based games, while at the same time trying to install in us the true meaning of perspective. They intentionally killed Joel off in such a way to blind us with all this hate towards Abby, making us wanting to get her, torture her like she tortured Joel, and kill her to avenge the life of our beloved character Joel, just to then introduce the true meaning of perspective by making our hate and anger intensify even more when we have to play as Abby midway through the game to truly test our own personal bias and see if we can actually understand the true meaning of perspective and truly understand why Abby even killed Joel in the first place. This game tries to test you in certain ways to see if you can separate from your own personal bias and see if you can understand that Joel deserved nothing. He was a guy that did so much wrong and even though we love him as a character, we cannot excuse for what he did. And even though Abby was in the wrong in torturing and killing Joel, her act must never be seen in a worse light than what Joel did, just because we don't have a connection with Abby at first, but we do have one with Joel. That would be a little bit hypocritical, because both of these characters have equally done something truly horrendous, and none of them should ever be excused for what they did. Many people have said that Joel deserved a better death, but that just shows that people just cannot leave their personal bias aside and truly sit down and even try to understand the meaning of perspective. They became blind because dear Joel died and they put him in a pedestal when no character in this universe ever deserves that kind of treatment. In other words, they failed to understand what Naughty Dog was trying to do and their intentions with this game, which was basically to introduce perspective and understand both sides. Now, that doesn't mean that they're in the wrong for disliking this game. No, because everyone should actually have their own opinion and they basically have their own preferences and probably this game was just not for them or what they were looking for. But it just doesn't mean that if you didn't get the story that you wanted in this game, that this game is automatically a 0 out of 10 and it's complete trash. Because the reasons for basically some people not liking this game, which are valid reasons, could also be the same reasons why other people do like this game. It was a bold move for Naughty Dog. They knew 100% that this will divide many people, but it was a story that they wanted to share with the world. And at least for those who did enjoy the game, it paid off. And something that I love about this game is how Naughty Dog decided to tell their story. And I 100% understand why Neil Druckmann said that there are certain stories that can only be told via video games. The fact that I had to control Ellie and Abby and personally interact with what happened in this game with these characters because of the actions of Joel, I had an experience that I will never forget. And look, I know there's people out there that won't even give this game a try because of all the controversies surrounding it, but honestly, I would give anything for others to feel the same emotions I felt while playing this game. I would love for others just, just to try it for a little bit and see if they like it. If they don't like it, they don't like it. If they like it, they like it. But it's always good to try something because I really believe that a good chunk of people that try this game might actually like it. I would give anything to experience The Last of Us Part 2 for the first time again. To experience a story in which started very lightly and heartwarming, picking up where we left off with Ellie and Joel off in The Last of Us Part 1, seeing how Joel was basically singing future days to Ellie and telling her that he will teach her how to play guitar, only for then things to just go dark so soon with experiencing Joel's cruel demise by Abby's hand right in front of Ellie, making me cry honestly my eyes out and just making me feel the same rage and sense of revenge that Ellie had. To then embark in a journey to search for this bitch Abby, hunt her down and make her pay for what she did. I just want to experience for the first time again, basically feeling and seeing how Ellie was turning into this despicable monster and me wanting for Ellie to just snap out of it and just go home because of the things that she was doing. 
and it became very apparent that it was just not worth it, killing many people in front of you just trying to get to Abby. But the game made me continue down Ellie's descent towards darkness, and I just couldn't do anything about it. Seeing Ellie brutally kill Nora, and then recklessly enter where Mel and Owen were, trying to intimidate them into basically telling her where Abby was, just like Joel intimidated people before, only then to fail and kill Owen in the process, and kill Mel who was actually pregnant. And then, we get to experience Ellie at her all-time low. It was crushing to see. Her humanity was slipping away, and all she could do was just go home. She finally understood that things just had to be okay with Abby living. Ellie had already done so much bad, and she just needed to go. But just like what happened to Joel, Ellie's actions came back to haunt her. Jesse is killed by Abby, Tommy is compromised, and Ellie is scared to hell, seeing how Abby is basically pointing a gun at her. And then where we thought the climax was going to happen, perspective kicks in. Now we play as Abby, her side of the story. And we understand now that she killed Joel because Joel didn't just destroy the only chance for humanity to find a cure, but most of her fellow Fireflies members who were brutally killed by Joel, including her beloved father. Abby's section at first was very hard for me to connect with because she indeed killed Joel off, a character that I truly love and for me is still one of my favorite characters in video game history. My personal bias was still present and I just couldn't let go of what she did. But when I completed her section and replayed the game multiple times, I now can appreciate Abby more as a character. And that's what I really like about this game. It makes you appreciate both characters and both perspectives. And the way Naughty Dog tackled by introducing perspective in this game was actually pretty good. You see, Abby isn't a good person either. No one in this world of The Last of Us is. She did something horrible in torturing and killing Joel. We all know that. But what the game basically shows you is how even though Abby trained for so many years, making herself a literal weapon to hunt down Joel and complete her revenge, it did not make her happy. And it did not let her move on from the fact that her father is dead and nothing is going to bring him back. She continued to have bad dreams and no matter what she did, she couldn't shake them off. There is even a certain point in which you see Abby completely regretting what she did and try to redeem herself by helping Lev and Yara escape from the Seraphites even though the Seraphites are her enemy. And even though Abby went so far into a path of redemption, her actions by killing Joel also came back to haunt her. All of her friends are killed. Manny, Nora, Mel, and her love, Owen. The cycle of hatred and revenge took away everything from Ellie and Abby. And when we experience their battle in the theater, after seeing both perspectives, we just want them to stop because both of these characters lost everything because of this cycle of hatred and revenge. We just want them to stop, but the game doesn't let you. And it makes you continue and it makes you continue until you basically make Ellie lose the battle. And then after that, Abby forgives Ellie and Dina's lives because Lev reminds Abby that she isn't the same person who killed Joel. Abby decides to break the cycle of hatred and revenge and leaves. After experiencing this battle, I believe this is where Naughty Dog got it all correct. Because if they got you to feel this, this feeling of not wanting Abby or Ellie to continue fighting and you just want them to be going their separate ways and just live happily, that's basically what the game was trying to do. Give you perspective. Make you feel bad for both sides. You feel bad for Ellie because you lost Joel. That's a personal connection for you. But if you also felt something for Abby, then the game did its job. The game make you, made you feel and made you understand the perspective of Abby and understand that, look, everybody thinks that in their own world, in their own story, they are right. But at the end of the day, in every single situation, there is always two sides of each story. Now, this is where the game should have left things, right? I mean, this is where we see Ellie and Dina 
living happily ever after with their son JJ in their beautiful farm and just basically staying away from all the bad things that they experienced in the world of The Last of Us. But real life isn't like this and life continually sucks. Naughty Dog made sure we understood that and made us see and experience Ellie suffering from PTSD and we see that things aren't truly as well and happy as we thought they were. The shameful reality of things is that we humans just do not know how to truly let go of things that we're super obsessed with until we basically lose it all or we lose ourselves. And the only way we actually, you know, leave and destroy that sense of obsession is shamefully when we hit rock bottom. And that's what happened with Ellie. She decided to leave Dina and JJ and destroy everything that she had, that she built and she loved. And she saw that at the end, it was just not worth it. Ellie encountered a weakened Abby, and even though she had the chance to just let her go because she already suffered enough by being strapped on a wooden pole for weeks, Ellie, who had become completely obsessed with killing Abby to this point, she just forced Abby to basically fight to the death. Now, I know some people hated the fact that Ellie decided not to kill Abby, but this is one of the reasons why I actually liked the ending of The Last of Us Part 2. While Ellie was drowning Abby, she was thinking about Joel, but not Joel dead on the floor. She instead remembered the Joel that she loved and cared for, their last conversation that they had as father and daughter, and understood in that brief moment, Abby and Lev are like Ellie and Joel, and that Joel wouldn't have wanted Ellie to basically lose herself by doing this. Ellie decides to basically save the little piece of humanity she has left in her and lets Abby go. And at that moment, she destroys the cycle of hatred and revenge. And now, Ellie is now in rock bottom. Everything and everyone she ever loved, gone. Her connection with Joel with the ability to play guitar, gone. But her humanity is still alive by doing the right thing at the end of the day and letting someone who suffered as much as Ellie live. The end of this game is truly devastating and sad, and as we see our beloved Ellie hit rock bottom, we experience a sense of hope as well. Even though Ellie has lost it all, she can now truly restart her life and basically let go of this unhealthy obsession that destroyed her whole life, and truly move on like Abby did. And this is basically The Last of Us Part 2. One of the most amazing games I have ever had the chance to experience. No game that I've played this year, or even in the last couple of years, has made me cry, laugh, be angry, happy, stressed, scared, traumatized, hurt, and hopeful as much as this game. I have never been this invested, this immersed in a game for quite some time. And even though I did not receive the game I wanted, which was basically another adventure with Joel and Ellie, Naughty Dog instead gave me a game that I needed to experience. I think that people that love this game would agree with me on that sense. People love this game because the risks that Naughty Dog took paid off for them. People love this game because the gameplay, the graphics, the music are truly one of the best, if not the best, in any PlayStation 4 game ever made. People love this game because of how immersive this game is. People like The Last of Us Part 2 because we got to experience the true meaning of perspective with two amazing characters in Ellie and Abby, who went through terrible experiences because of the actions of one man, Joel. Joel was the center focus of this game because of what he did, and all of it could have basically been avoided if Joel just left the hospital and sacrificed Ellie to just have a minor chance of a vaccine. But his love for Ellie basically was so big that he didn't care and you can see that he didn't care he loved ellie so much that this is what he said in the final conversation he had with ellie before he died you're such an asshole i'm not trying to i was supposed to die in that hospital my life would have fucking mattered but you took that from me. <sighs> if 
somehow the Lord gave me a second chance at that moment. I would do it all over again. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why people love The Last of Us Part 2. Subscribe to my channel for more content like this and like this video because it does help the video and the channel out a lot. Please share this video to everyone you know. If you agree with me and comment in the comment section down below if you love or dislike The Last of Us Part 2, let's keep it respectful down there in the comment section. These two videos, why The Last of Us Part 2 is hated and loved, were very fun to make and seeing over 100,000 people seeing my previous video which was the last of why the last of us part 2 is hated is honestly a blessing not all the comments though are the best because some of them wish them death threats on me or insult me to death because i like this game but i guess that comes with basically doing these videos but still, thank you from the bottom of my heart for the recent support you guys have been making on this channel. And let's make sure that the Last of Us Part 2 community sees this video and show the love that we have for this game. Stay positive, stay safe, endure and survive, and I'll see you guys next time.